let us be called to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. God, make known to us all you have done and all you have yet to do. Speak to us once more your powerful message of deliverance deliverance from oppression and injustice, deliverance from fear and hopelessness. Free us in this hour from all that would stifle our spirits. May your word in us bear fruit for all the world. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. Today's lesson comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 28. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for today's Psalter, found on page 777 in the hymnal. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food, day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng, and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Open God, whom I intend to praise, my help and my God. My 
soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jor Jordan and of Erman, from Mount Mazar. He calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night, God's song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I pray to God, my rock, rock. Why, why have you not Why do I mourn because of the oppression of the enemy? Like a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me. They say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, whom again I shall praise, my help and my God. Please be seated. Excuse me, let us rise for the reading of the good news, the gospel, which is found in the gospel according to Matthew. 
about the institution of the Lord's Supper, known to us as communion. While the disciples were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from the it, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please, be sit, uh, please remain standing for the gradual hymn. One, may that which we dream and that which we do become not two, but one. Help us to remain dreamers made in your image and help us to, help us to be doers of your word. In your name we offer our prayer. Amen. Well, we Methodists are dreamers but we're also very much doers, and we are uh, an organized denomination, if nothing else. Some of you may have read about a recent event in the United Methodist Church known as General Conference. It, take pl it takes place every four years, and it took place last month in Portland, Oregon. General Conference is when delegates from all the areas called conferences of the United Methodist Church gather to make decisions that will carry our denomination through the next four years. It was a difficult time, as I said before. Much took place, but the press picked up mostly on the possibility that our denomination would split over issues of human sexuality. We didn't split, the body couldn't make decisions, and so it put all these uh, concerns into the hands of the bishops and said, please prayerfully come back to us with a way forward because we cannot go forward ourselves. And the bishops in their response included the passage from Galatians that Sarah read for us this morning. We didn't split, but there were difficult moments and one of them happened around one of the two sacraments recognized by the United Methodist Church, communion, which is the sacrament that we uh, celebrate today. Actually, we're going to be celebrating both of our sacraments today. The other is baptism. It happened at the beginning of the conference, the incident that I'm talking about. Uh, Reverend Vicki Flippin, who is a pastor at Church of the Village, which is a very dynamic United Methodist congregation in New York City. It's a congregation which has been very successful in attracting young adults and including them. She had been selected to give a greeting at the opening worship of General Conference. More specifically, she was asked to offer, quote, a Christian greeting representing her English language ministry context as were many others from many of the different countries around the world that were part of this gathering. And as everyone was supposed to do, she submitted her remarks beforehand for review. She was told that she could not 
welcomed the LGBT community to worship and communion. For those who may not know, LGBT means lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. And so Reverend Vicki chose not to participate rather than to have her greeting censored. The service unfolded with music, procession, greetings, and a sermon. And after the sermon, all of the bishops moved into positions around the large assembly hall. There were around a thousand people gathered there in preparation to serve communion to all those people. And so people were guided row by row from the bleachers to communion stations in different parts of that room. And then something unexpected happened. A group of people moved from the periphery into the main part of the assembly, carrying a large banner which read, Remember Me. Right into the middle of the room they came. Slowly, the delegates began to notice their presence. And one by one, a small group of general conference delegates stepped out of the lines where they were waiting to receive communion from the bishops. They moved over to two clergy who held the bread and the cup underneath that banner which read, Remember Me, meant to be a cry for those who had been silenced and excluded from worship and communion. Finally, it took a while to serve all those people. Most had been served, but not all. And then two delegates came over and took the cup from those who had been serving under the banner and returned the act of grace by giving them communion. And then all had been served. And all quietly returned to their seats, having made their witness, this is my body broken for you, this is my blood shed for you. Friends, we are all sinners. No one is perfect or perfectly worthy to come to the table. And in the United Methodist Church, no one is to be excluded from receiving that which God gives. We are family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are children. We are sons and daughters of God. And so are people everywhere of every kind. No matter what any of us may believe, none of us has the right to refuse the gifts of God to those who come to the table to receive. Now, Michelle Peterson, as our lay member, and I, as our pastor, just returned from annual conference, which is the annual meeting of clergy and lay representatives from churches in this conference, which is uh, called the Baltimore-Washington Conference. We have 642 churches, and nearly 1,200 people attended. It was in Washington, D.C. this year, not far from this church. We worshiped together. We conducted the business of the church. And one day, we prepared to receive communion. One of the people serving communion is named T.C. Morrow. If you do an online search, her name will come up. T.C. had come to be considered as a candidate for ordained ministry. She was endorsed by our Board of Ordained Ministry, which uh, does the vetting of candidates, but she did not receive the percentage of votes needed to become ordained. And yet she was there one of two dozen or so stationed at different places around the room, ready to serve communion to some of those 1,200 people. There she was, rejected, and yet still remaining part of the family, holding the cup, declaring it to be the blood of Christ, shed for each person who came to her. And then she quietly sat down. Remember me, that banner held up at General Conference in Oregon, speaks for all of us. We all want to be remembered. No one wants to be rejected or forgotten. 
The good news is that when we gather to receive, we are reminded that God forgets no one, God rejects no one, and God loves everyone. We are made in the image of God, and we are called to love and to never forget. And though we all fall down on that particular job, there is hope for us yet. We at Potomac United Methodist Church declare ourselves to be a congregation with open hearts, open minds, and open doors, and to be open to all people. Are we? Let us answer that question in the silence of our hearts. Amen. One of the pleasures of being church is to embrace and welcome those who come to join the family. And today's experience gives us the chance to uh, show how there are really two different dimensions to that family. One is the spiritual family that we are, and we become part of that through baptism, and we receive God's mark upon us. And then we also join specific communities. Uh, ours is, of course, Potomac United Methodist Church. Today we have both baptism and we have one who has come to join with us uh, in the second way. There are others who couldn't make it today and we'll receive them in another time. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to call the Smith, Liang, Sakura families and uh, Tyler Ann Tansing to come forward and we'll make our way up here, around here. And those uh, with the family, godparents or whoever want, you want to come with you are also invited to come forward now. And I would invite the rest of us to turn to page 33 in your hymnals because uh, this is a community ritual in which we all participate. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the act of baptism, the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And also through confirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing to us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I'm so delighted to welcome these candidates for both baptism and uh, for inclusion in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. And so now we're at the top of page 34, and I have some questions to ask those of you who are family members, sponsors, and um, part of the families who will be, those who will be baptized and taken in. On behalf of the whole church, in every place and time, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin. Will you say, I do? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Will you say, I do? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you say, I do? Will you nurture your children and your godchildren in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly and lead a Christian life. Will you say, I will? 
And Tony, I ask you this question. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? Will you say, I will? Will you who sponsor these candidates support and encourage them in their Christian life? Will you say, I will? Do you, as the congregation, this is top of page 35, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yeah. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and include these persons now before you in your care? Yeah. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news, living according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with, with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. We now turn to page uh, 36. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal one, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept over the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin, clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives that died and being raised with Christ they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Okay, we are, we have uh, truly a treat today, um, and we have uh, baptisms, and um, one of those pairs of baptisms is a father and son baptism. Uh, uh, and they are connected with a very active and beloved family of our church, Michelle and Bob Peterson. So it is our pleasure, and we will begin, Tony, with you, but known as Anthony for this person. So if you could please kneel here. Anthony Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, um, if some of us here maybe could just gather around Tony and we'll, the laying on of hands, you know the laying on of hands, if you feel comfortable doing this in the ancient way of the church, put your hand that the Holy Spirit might come through you and be upon Tony, Anthony. Anthony Smith, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. James Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, now I'm going to give him back to you. and We will gather around and lay hands on him and... Ask the blessing of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the devil coming out of him. That's what we say every time, and it's true. James Smith, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may grow up to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. We say this, and it's true for families. This really is um, a way of saying that the evil is 
coming out and and children are children and we're delighted to have your children here truly we are so please relax all right okay and now I'm going to ask you Missy to come forward also known to us today as Tyler Ann and if you could kneel okay and um, we're going to um, not baptize you, but we're going to bless your baptism. So if you could come around, if we could all put our hands out to uh, help Missy, known to us as Tyler Ann, be blessed. Tyler Ann Tansing. Having been born of water and the Spirit, May you continue to live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ and of this church, Potomac United Methodist Church. Be blessed. Amen. Okay. That was... I'd just like to take a moment to invite the congregation to, to look up here and see who is coming into your midst. Um, it, we're not all the same. Um, and, and that is wonderful, where the diversity of United Methodist Church is one of our strong points. Um, and uh, actually, Missy, I do have one question for you. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your service, your, your uh, gifts, and your witness? Will you please say, I will? Okay. All right. And now I invite you to look toward the congregation because there's a prayer that, or a blessing they are saying to you. Members of the household of God, I commend all these persons here to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. You all have come forward today and you have given us a gift. Uh, a chance for us all to renew our faith, a chance for us to pray for you, and a chance for us to welcome you into the family of the church. We often have um, walked down the aisle so that people can see uh, those who are blessed. Today we have a coffee hour, so I'm going to hope that you'll all come to the coffee hour so that we can receive you there and give you our personal thanks. Um, May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pass the peace. And we turn to the second sacrament of our church, which is communion, and hear this invitation. For Christ indeed invites to the table all who love him, 
who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and each other in a moment of silence. Holy God, we give you thanks for all who have come here today, those who have been baptized, all the families, and for she who has come to offer herself as a member of this congregation. Help us to live up to your hopes for us, that we are made in your image and we reach out in love and acceptance. In your name we pray, amen. All right, before we go to the offertory, there are a few announcements I have to share. And while I'm doing so, uh, if you would tear off the connection card here and fill it out and put it into the offering plate as it comes your way, that would be great. We do welcome anyone who is, to everyone, and particularly to those who are new today. So if there's anyone who is in this church for the first time, this congregation, this room, could you please raise your hand so that we can be sure to keep coming with you. Welcome to Potomac United Methodist Church. We have some visitors today. We're very glad that you're with us. We call you guests and we welcome you in that way. And then, did I see others in this group here? Anybody over here? So we're very glad that you're with us and we hope that everybody would join us at the coffee hour, which is directly beneath the sanctuary or we can greet you further. Uh, there is a cabaret happening this Friday. It is an event. There is information back there for uh, you to know, and our choir has worked very hard on this. It's a gift of music, and it's going to be beautiful. So, uh, again, I hope you are part of that. And then I just want to let you know that there will be the last eight weeks of summer, which uh, begin on the second week of July after July the 4th weekend, we will be having uh, a gathering night on Sunday with uh, Kaya worship, which means come as you are from 6.30 to 7. There will be a communion, it's informal, it's outside if weather permits, and in the Auschenbach Library if weather doesn't permit. Uh, and then there will be different things happening. The first week, there will be some mores. And then there will be line dancing to help us work off the s'mores. Uh, there will be an open gym night uh, every, every Sunday. And we just hope you kind of drop in whenever you feel like you want to do that. Or you've been away and you come back on Sunday evening and you want to worship, that's an opportunity for you to do so. And then on those uh, four Sundays of July, after the 4th of July weekend, we will be doing Bible study before church on uh, what it means to be a United Methodist and why does it matter. So that will be in the parlor directly beneath the sanctuary. You're welcome to drop in for one Sunday. It's not um, cumulative. Uh, just drop in when you feel like it, if you'd like to. So Bible study is there for us all. Having heard the word of God, let us continue to respond to God's word as we wait upon the ushers to receive our offering.
as we consider our circumstances, send your spirit to help us recognize that all you freely give, let gratitude overflow in our hearts so that we will joyfully share with others. May these tithes and offerings bring life and health to adults and children who are hungry in our community and around the world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Bless those whose names are lifted here. Bless she who joined PUMC today and all those and their families who have been baptized. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We do have a lot for, get to, for which we can give thanks, and we should give thanks, and we do it in a way that we call the great thanksgiving. May the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On that night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offered for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. To your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty One, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Christ has taught us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. And the cup of heaven, the blood of Christ, shed for you. The good things of God are for the people of God, and in the United Methodist Church, all are welcome to come to the table without exception. Today we will be receiving by intention. You will be given a wafer and invited to dip it into the cup. We also have gluten-free wafers for those who would choose gluten-free. And so I would ask Sarah to come forward. The choir will receive first, and we will go from there. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please rise for our recessional hymn.
have come from many families to worship as one family of God and as a community of faith, we have just sung this. Though with a scornful wonder the world sees us oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up, how long? But soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. May you go out into that morn of song as happy ones and holy. Amen.